All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the stream. So today we are going to be talking about dog constructed. And the reason I want to do that is we have a uh, legend series coming up, which will be constructed. And that is different than the past two, which have been dark draft. So today I'm mostly going to talk about constructed, which I do anyway, but I'll be going over different archetypes and I'll be building some decks from scratch just to show you what things look like. Also, we just had a new update come out. So I'm going to be talking about uh, just what this new update is and what some of the features are. So yeah, you can just see some new things happening already. Uh, but basically the UI has been changed. Things should make more sense and be easier, especially if you're a new player, but also we now have an undo feature. So that means you do something and you don't like what happened, you can undo as long as you don't get any information from your opponent. So basically, uh, you play a card that returns, uh, let's say it breaks a champion, right? You break a champion that's unbreakable by accident, you can undo that. Um, but if you played a card that, uh, like an erase, and you returned something to its owner's hand and you drew two cards, you wouldn't be able to undo that because you've drawn cards from your deck. So basically, or if you pass your opponent, can't, you can't go back from that. All right, so let's just go into the deck builder here. I've, I have made a lot of decks, but uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new one here. So I'm gonna start with some of the most popular styles, which are heavy wild decks. So wild decks are tend to be popular because they're pretty easy to build and uh, they're linear. So they have a game plan. They're trying to execute that game plan and usually they play that big champions and burn cards to finish the game out. So what we're gonna see in a wild decks, a lot of the time when you're starting, if you're just trying to build something from scratch, you can just look for cards that have loyalty. So loyalty cards, like this T-Rex right here, tend to be a lot stronger if you have more cards of the same color. So when you play this, it either, you'll just get a big, big champion or you'll also draw two cards if you have two wild cards in hand. So my suggestion is if you are if somewhat new to deck building, then you would want to start with uh, some kind of base. You'll choose an alignment and if you don't know where to start, loyalty is always a safe option. Now I'm going to go ahead and link the decks that I have uh, that I have done on stream here. So so far Sometimes, if a deck goes pretty poorly, I won't include it, but I have been linking and saving the decks that I've been making on stream, so I'm just going to post it right here. Alright, but basically, if you go here and you, you go over one of these import codes, you can just import it, and that'll add this, this all of these cards to your deck. This way, you can kind of try out different decks and tune them based on what... Uh, what kind of deck you like to play. Now, wild decks are pretty straightforward. Like I said, probably gonna do something like T-Rex because it's a big champion that draws you two cards. Strafing Dragon, and maybe we'll start with Hunting Raptors. This way, we're, what we're doing is we're putting in this big champion with draw two and these other two cards which can deal direct damage to our opponent. So we're going to have some direct damage and we're going to finish the game off with those. And I might play something like Draka here. The reason that we're going to play Draka is it's a Punisher. So when I build decks, I tend to build them with Punishers. Uh, but what the Punishers are, are in Epic, you have a gold on your turn and your opponent's turn. So a big part of the resource system is, okay, my opponent spent golds. Now their shields are down, right? You can play something that either uh, punishes them because they can't answer what you did or you just take advantage of the fact that you know they probably don't have any tricks. So the most common way to do that, if it's your turn, is the Blitz Champion. You can just display it, attack with it right away, and uh, this can happen even if you know you pass on your turn with your gold up, they spend their gold, it goes back into your turn, you can play a champion with Blitz and then immediately attack with it because Epic's phases are very fluid. All right, so this, this might be something like a base right here so I'm gonna go ahead and remove this filter and we'll put in some more wild cards generally big part of epic constructed because you have to have two one cost cards for every zero cost card in your deck 
of the same alignment. People like to uh, have as many zero cost cards as possible. And I definitely suggest trying to maximize your zeros by planning out, okay, what are my colors going to be? And if you have 20, say, wild one cost cards, then you'll have 10 wild zero cost cards. That means you're going to you're going to want to have an even amount of each of your one cost cards colors. So what you might do here is you might play Smash and Burn. Pretty pretty great card. We're gonna draw two and then later we're going to banish it to deal damage to a champion. Do something like Kong here. Surprise attack. Uh, and the reason that I chose these cards, right? I picked Kong just as a way to answer big things, which Wild tends to struggle with a little bit, and it's a threat on its own. So it's pretty, uh, pretty nice card. And we're going to have, we're going to take advantage of the fact that we have big champions in a minute. So we're also playing Surprise Attack because it's a pretty free card. You play it, you draw a card, you put a champion from your hand into play. If you have enough champions to take advantage of this effect in your deck, then Surprise Attack is going to be great. It's going to let you play a champion off turn. We're also going to play some burn which means cards that just deal direct damage to our opponent. I'm going to play Polar Shock here just as a way to deal damage to a champion and to our opponent. And then let's go ahead and right now, Whirlwind doesn't hit most of our stuff. It hits Hunting Raptors and Strafing Dragon, and the rest all survive. So we're going to go ahead and play Whirlwind in our deck. It also deals 7 damage to each player, so you can use that to take down your opponent. Great and aggressive decks. And then with our last Wild 1 cost slot, I'm going to go ahead and put in probably the Brachiosaurus here, which you really need a lot of wild cards for it to work, but uh, it you play it, and then you can play another one cost card. Usually I'll play Brachiosaurus and then pass to my opponent, so I'm kind of forcing them to react, to act first. And we're going to go ahead and look at our free wild cards here. So because we have 30, we're going to want 15, so 3 of each, that'll be 5 zero cost cards, 5 free cards. I'm going to go ahead and play Fire Shaman here, just because it's a reusable source of damage. So you play this, you play your one cost card, you get to deal three damage right away. And then every time you play another one cost card, uh, you will get to reactivate. It's very strong with Brachiosaurus, because you play this and Brachiosaurus and something else, you deal six damage. All right, and we're also going to play Rage. We definitely want a way to, this is what I was talking about when I said, we're going to take advantage of big champions. We're going to play Rage on a big champion that gets blocked by something, and then the breakthrough will go through to our opponent. We also want to have some ways to deal with small champions. So I'm going to go ahead and play Wolf Spite here and Flame Spike. Both of these cards can get rid of things like Muse and Thought Plucker, and people really like Thought Plucker, <laughs> let me tell you. Uh, it's very popular. And then aside from that, we have one more zero cost slot. So I'm actually probably going to play one last year because I like to have an extra source of breakthrough, and I find that one copy of Lash usually helps a lot. That one copy uh, means you can recall it if you need it, and it also just takes advantage of uh, the Brachiosaurus. So you play the Brachiosaurus, if you don't have a play to make, you can also recall this. And then we have two more. So right now we're playing Draka as a way to clear the board. So I think we'll be okay if we want to go ahead and just run uh, some feeding frenzies. Just as ways, more ways to take down big champions. I find that sometimes this card sits in my hand and I have to use it to draw two, so I'm only going to play two. And then this is a pretty solid base, so oftentimes after I start with something, I'll splash color. I think the easiest color to, to just splash from wild, uh, from a standard wild deck like this, is going to be Sage. We're just going to play probably some lessons learned so we can replay our events. And maybe misguide heralds here because we want to uh, we want to get our really powerful champions like our Kong and our raging T Rex and our Brachiosaurus. And then we need four more cards. So here you could either play some more Sage cards, you could play some more Wild cards. You don't usually like to do a split unless you have a really concept very specific concept in mind but if not then I'll usually just uh, go with the same I'll just go with two colors or one so I think what I'm gonna do here is 
I'll just go to races. Maybe maybe we'll go wave of transformation. So we have some way to clear the board. Like a hard clear. So we do three waves transformation in a race. This bounce is probably going to be very good in our deck. Alright, and then we just need to do our Sage Zeros here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the Vanishing style cards because these will help us clear the way. And I could play Vanishing, I could also play Dispearing Act. I'm gonna go with Dispearing Act primarily because that extra two damage might be very relevant for us. And you can play this off turn. Um, we're, we're going to end up having these games where we just kind of win because of uh, the game is going to come down to the wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and run two Amnesia. So we have at least some way to banish the opponent's discard pile if they start grinding us out. We'll just call this uh, Simple Wild Sage. All right. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this deck one game, and then I'm gonna go over some of the decks in that document, the stream document. Hey, Pix. How you doing? So I'm gonna be playing this deck, but I'm also going to be uh, talking about what changes have been done to the app. So let's see if I can find it. It's right there on the first page. Uh, yeah. But uh, I can just hop into an AI game here and I can explain what's happening, what I'm talking about when I say that there's been changes here. So let's go ahead and we'll mulligan. I'll make some quick mulligans here. All right, and I have my I have my speed turned up a lot. So right now, you see, it's your turn main. It says pass to enemy response. Whatever color this is, if it's red, that means they're going to take their turn. Okay, it's going to be their action. If it's blue, it's going to be your action. Now, let me see if I have a card I can play here. Let's say I play this Entangling of Vines, right? And I, I just decided not to use it. And I was thinking, oh man, you know what? This is Ambush. I should have played it on my opponent's turn. I just wasted the ability. I can just click this button right here. Uh, and I can take it back. Maybe I don't want to play that. Instead, what I'm going to do is pass my opponent. I don't like any of these plays. And the AI plays something. Now, I can't back it up before the AI played the Angel of Light. And the reason is, once the opponent gives you information, like you pass to them or you draw cards, you can't undo anything. So here, what I'm probably going to play is just, I'll draw two cards. Target player. I'm going to pass. I'm going to take five here. I'm going to think about it anyway. I'm going to make a bunch of things, which are probably going to end up banishing or something. Yeah, we're probably going to have to inherit to make everything here, which is fine. We're just going to draw two, and then we'll banish everything on our next turn. We deal three damage to them and all of our champions. We'll just go for the banish all. Use tokens. It's hidden behind my head. <laughs> You're right, I'll move it, I'll move it. He didn't used to be there. We'll just put this over here. Hopefully that doesn't take up anything. <laughs> good call, good call. All right. Uh, thank you for letting me know how picks. <laughs> Okay, where was I? All right, we're being attacked here. We're just gonna deal three damage to them and all of the champions. Straight forward. Oh, and now I'm in a game. Now I can act to this off. All right, so we are, opponent's going, it looks like they just chose the random 30. So I just did quick play so I could play with whoever was uh, signed up. The opponent is mulliganing. I don't think I want Strafing Dragon here. And it's gonna be their turn, so the rest of the sand seems fine. I mean, I don't really need Plague Zombies either. This will give me an off turn play and a draw two plus removal. So I can keep the zero because I have everything else I need. And uh, so you'll see here, this shows the amount of time that the opponent has to take their turn. It's the amount of minutes they have left. So in this case, on the left, you can't see my mouse, but uh, they have two minutes and 40 seconds left to take their move um, before they just lose their turn, basically. And they have 24 seconds, 24 minutes left before they're out of time in the match. 
They just mulliganed here. So now it's their turn after mulligans. Overall, I mean, I'm very happy with the undo change. Uh, they're going to play War Machine. They're not going to give it. Oh, they are going to give it Blitz. They're going to attack now. Banish all the points, zero as champions, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, so now when tri when abilities a activate, the card will pop up so you can see what, what actually activated. So now I have a couple of options. I could uh, break that and make a demon. I could jump it. I could draw two. I could banish it and draw a card. I could just take ten. I'm going to go ahead and break it and give them a demon token. I just need to nod a uh, 10 here. It's a lot of damage. Unfortunately, this makes this Thrasher Demon pretty bad because uh, it attacks into this. So we saw two cards revealed. We saw a Warrior Golem and a Helion. When you click on their hand, you just see they played a Warrior Golem. I mean, they showed a Warrior Golem and a Helion. So, Warrior Golem, uh, I usually like to keep the zero cost ones in mind, but this one can also gain control of one of our two. Oh yeah. All right, so our turn's gonna start. I think what we're gonna do is just play this pack alpha and make some wolf tokens. There are three threes, so we can block the demon token with two wolf tokens if we want. Also, one thing that uh, is different is that the opponent's side of the board, you'll notice it's flipped around. So basically, uh, when it attacks, it'll turn sideways, and you'll be able to see champions. You'll be able to read champions when they're Right when they've been played, so this will be facing me. Yeah, there's this, this daytime nighttime thing, so it's daytime on your turn and nighttime on their turn. Yep. I think that's what you mean. Maybe you mean the boards here are kind of messed up, yeah. It's alright though. Also, if you click right here, you can see like what the turn. We can banish our tokens and draw a card. What kind of random 30 is this? <laughs> That's all right, though. We're, we're just going to take the damage. We'll play the Zealous Necromancer at the end of the turn. Yeah, so if you click this, you can do it during combat. I'll shut off in a minute. Banish those. Or um, we give it blitz, probably. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Probably just draw cards now. In case I draw zero that I could put in the way of that, I would. So it would give me two demon, two zombie tokens. Whenever another, oh, we're gonna skip the block. Whenever, an, whenever another champion breaks, if this is in play, you get a zombie token. So I'm gonna go ahead and deal their damage. They can technically play something here, but if only I could <laughs> activate that Draka. It'd be great. It's probably the play's probably gonna be Reaper, but it's really unfortunate. I have no real off turn play here. I could banish mint to draw a card and hopefully get an off turn play, but then I also don't have a play to make off turn. That's not great. It's probably just gonna have to be Reaper. Make two wolf tokens, and then we're going to go ahead and play this, break a champion, we're going to break the uh, markets, and then we get a zombie token for that. But let me tell you, it's not looking good for us here. Yeah, I think it'll just take, it'll, it'll be interesting to see, it might be reverted if people really don't like it. There's something to be said for just, people have played with the other way for so long that, uh, definitely like I know that when I first saw this I was uh, I was uh, resistant but uh, oh they're gonna go ahead and clear both sides of the board I think this is actually good for me so I get to keep this All right, they're gonna take it out. fair enough let's go ahead and get in with the strategy demon then but that could definitely be something that you just toggle you decide, no, I don't want that. Alright. So we only have banishment for off turn, so I'm guessing we're just going to start our turn without playing anything, but we'll see. I really don't 
want to banish me and my opponent's champion and have them draw a card, but we might have to here. Right now we know of all of these cards in hand. So we just drew one card that we don't know about. We just drew one card that we don't know about. I can't even banish me that, it's unbanishable. <laughs> kind of funny actually. What happened there? What happened was I was changing, I was looking at this and I don't know. I'm just gonna close and reopen. Uh yeah, you just click on their hand. You can see all the cards they revealed minus the cards that they've played. Alright, I don't know why that happened. All right, well, I don't have anything to spend my gold on, so. Now we're going to go ahead and attack with this. Let's see what happens. Sink the counters. But it breaks anything that deals damage to. So if they decide to block the Thrasher Demon with their Gladius, then the Gladi they'll both break. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. Yep, and you can see they're both going to die here. Well, I'm just going to let that happen. All right. Next. What do we know about? I think I just pass here, honestly. All right, I, I keep doing, I keep looking through the log. Just, uh, or is it happen? I'm going to pass, yeah. If I play anything, it's bad for me because they can play Crystal Golem or Angel of the Gates. So if I play anything, it, it turns out worse for me. Now that they've played that, I can play this uh, Airborne Champion. I should have played the Banishment, that was my bad. Oh well. Psh. This is a greedy play on my part. If it gets removed, then it's pretty pretty greedy. Or if they play like Helion and gain control of it, that would be super bad. Alright, but it looks like they don't. They're not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and block and see what happens. Rage, huh? But we can get some use out of that banishment. Let, let, let them draw a card. It's fine here because they are drawing a card, but we're also gaining a Draka. So to remove that and gain this and they draw a card, it's pretty simple. They're gonna die. <laughs> right? We're gonna have to take the five here. In a battle pass. You can also just view your settings now in in game. Go ahead and turn stack of tokens on. This looks great for me. They didn't spend their golds. They have a crystal golem. We know both of these cards now. I think they should have just played the crystal golem and drew two with it immediately. So yeah, we'll just attack here. I could even play this canopy ranger to give it plus six plus six, which it will likely do. So that'll mean I'm doing fifteen. They go down to nine. Like that sounds great. We're gonna drop you right away. No mercy. There's the dun 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 when uh, you go to combat, but um, the uh, the day night cycle. It's day on your turn and night on their turn. Let's see if I can just. Why this? Okay, there we go. <laughs> Alright, they just discarded a Gudgeon. I think Gudgeon would be... Well, yeah, Gudgeon's gonna lay him here. Now, what's nice is I've set up lethal. This Draka just swings for 9 next turn, which would kill them. Kind of incidentally. The sound effect. It could potentially change a lot, though, if uh, you were... That's pretty good. Well, I have to draw two and a half, so four. There's no way I don't do those things. Yep. Could die, but probably won't.
yeah, what I was just getting at was uh, the only downside to that is that uh, dark value, double my health total right there. Uh, the only main downside is if it changed every time an attack happened, if you're attacking with you know five human tokens, you'd be going through a lot of day-night cycles. All right. Really shaping up to be a real game. Could go either way, really. I'm probably gonna lose. I don't think I have a way to stop that lightning storm from happening again if they just recall it in their turn. I'm gonna go ahead and play this dragonling just in case they can remove my card. If they just start their turn and recall this lightning storm, I have to draw into help me. It's not not ideal plan. Winter Fairy, huh? Alright, they're playing it safe. Probably would have recalled the Lightning Storm if I was them, just to go for lethal. Wow, a lot of things. Alright, well, we're drawing two. I suppose they can sort of, uh. They can sort of just recall the Lightning Storm on this turn and then play it on their next turn. So it's pretty close to the same thing. Hmm. I might be able to scare them if I wither the Wither Fairy and then attack with the Dragon Link. I might be able to do it. I kind of have to draw something really special right now. I think I'd just draw two first. I think I'd draw two with the Resurrection first. I have to kind of scare them into making a play that stops my attack here. It's the only way we win. I was drawing two in case I drew into uh, some health gain or something that would make this bigger, like a Go Wild or a Brave Squire. Yeah, yeah, we're dead. That's alright, we'll play it out. Waiting, waiting my demise. And I'm dead. Alright, well, good game. Against the DJ Olagoji. I hope I hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Alright, so what I'm gonna do now, I didn't actually really play with that deck, but um, I'll talk about a couple of these other decks. I'm just going to pick out some of the ones from this uh, deck stream deck list, and I'll repost the link here I did earlier. I'm not sure if you can see the previous one. I'll repost it. Yeah, the UI looks so much better now. But, uh, alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and pick a couple of decks out right here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Sage down deck. This one was one of my favorites actually to play with. I uh, was commenting about how basically it's very uh, straightforward, right? It's different than the other deck because what we're running here we're running here are Juggernaut we're running cards like Steel Golem Belden, where basically this is more of a tempo deck where we're just hitting our opponent for damage and then we're relying on uh, on our wave transformation on our uh, vanishing and just pushing damage through I think I think I actually ended up making a deck like this but uh, yeah I did I'm gonna go ahead and load the duels one because that's gonna be what that tournament is on 
All right, so this is a dual sage tempo right here. Pretty straightforward deck. I mean, we ended up running what? Flame Strike, Whirlwind, and Fires of Rebellion for burn options. But otherwise, there's just uh, some direct damage. Uh, some uh, some of these sage cards. Uh, we also ended up putting in Garbage Golem, and Despairing Act from duels, just as Garbage Golem was kind of like this draw to you. Dash to a champion, so it helps fill us up, but it puts a threat on the board. And then Disappearing Act is another card that bounces something. Uh, and we have a couple of big threats, mainly Steel Golem, but also Velbin. Uh, and these other ones are medium sized, I'd say. But basically, the medium sized ones are still very relevant. I mean, eight, this is pretty much going to be a three turn clock, right? You hit them three times, and then I kill them with a fire, it's a rebellion, or Flame Strike, same thing with Juggernaut. And then I have Shadows and they're difficult to block. All of these cards are difficult to block. All right, but yeah, we just go ahead and give this a go. I ended up playing Go Wild here, but I kind of want to just play uh, Flame Spike instead. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that change. Flame Spike is a good way to deal, deal the final damage to a player. And it kind of helps us deal with small champions. I think I'll probably also, instead of Fires of Rebellion, play the new duels card. Full of shock. That way we can take out a champion if we deal direct damage to them. And it combos well with our small amounts of damage. So we have Fires, we have Force Mage Prentice, Disappearing Act, Wolf Spike, and Flame Spike all deal a small amount of damage for zero. And if we have a Helion in play from the previous turn, we can deal a small amount of damage with that. So. We should be able to combine it with some of these other small damage cards to take out something that is larger. You know, I might even go ahead and knock this up, pull a shock up one, knock down the flame strike down to two, so that way we can kind of see both of those cards more often. All right. But otherwise, some of these other decks, basically there is, like the, the Dead Dinos deck was a duelist deck that I made that was wild and evil. So basically you're just overwhelming your opponent by playing large threats over and over again. Uh, the buffer mid-range one, I don't think that had any, it didn't have any duels cards in it, but uh, we just rely on chipping away at the opponent's health. Uh, that one was sage and good. And it had a lot of sustain. So you played things like Angel of the Gate and uh, Avenging Angel, which can just end up healing you for 10 or 20 over the course of the game. So you are, it, this one's very good at winning races. We also had this pump deck, called, uh, which I called Pump Cheese. Basically, it was really just uh, a deck that that was using the buff, the self-champion buff cards, to kind of nuke your opponent out of nowhere. Uh, and then you've got classics, like Card Control is just standard control deck but uh, you are trying to win by gaining health and then playing Kark, so that Kark wins you the game if you're at 60 or more health. We have uh, this Death Metal deck is all about engines, so it's an engine-based deck. It's mostly evil. We use Necromancer Lord, Royal Escort to protect our engines, uh, and then basically we just uh, once this game starts to go longer and longer, if you can just get one of your threats to stick, it'll generate enough value on its own to take the game away. So, really, very snowball-y. Uh, then there was... Uh, there's some, of, some of these top decks are a little older, so they don't have any of the new cards in them. Like, I should try and make a Soldier deck with the new cards, the duels ones. Because Soldier was... Uh, Probably my favorite deck from this list. It uh, basically it was a Soul Hunter deck that would just draw a lot of cards, and then you would occasionally just discard these random cards. One of the reasons that I really liked it was it was very sturdy against discard decks. I like drawing cards. I like having lots of cards in my hand and not having to worry about uh, about running out. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this one in here. See if we can make any changes to it. This was Soldier. I 
a pretty pretty straightforward deck. I mean, we didn't do anything crazy. Just drew a lot of cards, and then we would discard random stuff to max the hand size. Soul Hunter. So yeah, let's go ahead and we'll take this. What we want to do, I think we definitely want Disappearing Act in this deck, right? Frantic Digging. We're not playing Frantic Digging. I just have to play this one again to get a feel for it. I haven't played it in a while. Like maybe instead of Necrovirus, we just play the new evil our evil champion that draws two. Sweet Sundler. Yeah, I remember this deck being a lot of fun. It was really... <laughs> It's really all about making a deck around Thought Plucker and just drawing a million cards. What have we got? Alright, we're random thirdying it. We're going first. So this Forest Dweller is going to be great. It'll just draw us a card when we play it. And I want an off turn play, so that'll be Secret Legion here, which will probably be drawing me two cards. And I'm going to toss the other cards. Rescue Griffin's alright, but especially in random, I mean, this card's actually good. Uh, but especially in random 30, I really need to find more cards that give me more cards. If I don't have a zero cost card in my opening hand, that's perfectly fine. I'd much rather that than uh, run out of draws. And none of these are game changing. Like, if this Uncrunchable Thirst was a consume or a wither, I would probably keep it just because it could take down a small zero cost threat that my opponent played early but as it stands recycle this one vanishes too so you don't really want this in your opening hand because you don't have any cards in your discard pile yet rescue griffin great card against aggressive strategies but uh it does run make your hand go lower because it's a zero cost champion um and we don't have we're not going to have a big hand size for a while punchable thirst this one you want lots of evil cards in your discard pile so Pretty, pretty straightforward. Same guy. Or whatever. Getting close to the time out here. Right now the arena is a random 30, so... I'm not going to try and go out of my way to find an arena game, but if I see someone in there, I'll, I'll, totally, I'll totally play against them. What happens if you time out here? You'll just uh, the game will just end. I'm not positive. Science, I guess. Uh, go. Uh, where was I? I was just playing uh, this one. Got a lot of wild sage checks in that, in that opening four there. <laughs> so it was just going over the the, the uh, regular ones. I'll just do this. I'll go ahead and I'll say. in the middle of this and I uh oh wait no I wanted the second one
and we'll toss uh I'll just toss a couple of decks in here so I can talk about them and I'll make this one a buffer mid-range one. Oh yeah. I just call this buffer mid-range because it's basically a mid-range deck, right? You have cards like cards like Angel of Light, Angel of the Gate, Gold Dragon. Those are all going to make it so that you gain a lot of health. So those are kind of like your buffer, right? And the mid-range part of it is you're just playing medium-sized. You're, you're playing cards that on their own, they can stand on their own and just be a threat. You don't need anything special to happen. Like if you, if you play an Angel of the Gate, your opponent wants to remove it. Uh, Angel of Light really is more of a way just to gain health uh, quickly to just get yourself away from the danger zone. And, you know, Palace Guard's more of a removal card than a champion, but they add up. Each individual thing will be a lot. And you've got a couple of little synergies here. Like you, can, you can Corpse Taker to return your, something to your hand, and you can play Sea Titan and return the Corpse Taker to your hand. Uh, yeah, otherwise it's just pretty straightforward. We just have a lot of, uh, a lot of different cards that are all the same game plan. That's really what Epic Decks are about. There's not necessarily one game plan you sometimes decks will be more aggressive sometimes they're trying to line up certain cards sometimes they are trying to execute a very specific combo like with drinker of blood or maybe they're just trying to make it so that the game goes long enough that their plentiful dead zombies can survive this one's more of a classical uh on this one's all about just you just play gigantic champions and then you get all of your champions get through with like a battle cry or um, or deadly raid. This was actually one of my favorite decks to play, as I was calling it, because I was like, oh, this deck is so dumb, right? I mean, it's really much more of a sage deck than a wild deck. We just have some burn cards in here, but um, yeah, you just slam those giant things down, and then a couple of turns later, you give them all on. on Untargetable or unbreakable. In fact, we could probably even just add a couple of cards to make this more, make this more like the other deck. We could we could cut the keepers as well. I kind of want the keeper keepers. Probably cut wild cards honestly. I mean, I guess that's kind of what the other deck was going for. We'll leave it as it is. I don't know. I don't know. If I could make any cuts necessarily, I could cut the Rage and Shirax because it's a bit inconsistent to get two wild cards in hand. Maybe something like cut Rage and Shirax, cut Flash Fire, cut uh, Savage Uprising, probably. I'm sure I can stay. Add some more Sage Guards in. Some Disappearing Axe. Veld in. It's not already in here. Put in. I mean, it's Juggernaut. Or Erase or something like that. Some Chronicler or something. So try Chronic Chronicler. This is a this is a great great upgrade, right? You might need Ancient Shan. Oh, it's already in here. <laughs> I was just thinking, you might need Ancient Shan this deck. You're going to run out of cards so quickly. It's already in there. That's what we're waiting here. Like, I'll show you this. Uh, Dead Dinos. That was one of my, my more favorite decks recently. This deck was great. I really enjoyed playing this deck. It was a Evil Wild, which I don't play very often. But uh, I wish I did, because you basically just replay these the cards that uh, are just, they need to be answered right away. Your whole deck is just about reusing those over and over again. You just play these gigantic dinosaurs, and then you just reanimate them. It's great. <laughs> it's, really just, it's just great fun. You honestly end up kind of using the same cards a lot, but it's, 
really, it's really a good time. Really good time. If there is a Thunderous for dinosaurs, I would totally put it in this deck. We have so many. We have Pyrosaur, Raging T-Rex, and Kong. And I could play Brachiosaurus, but I ended up cutting it. It's kind of difficult. It's kind of difficult to have the Brachiosaurus always hit, hit a wild card. Definitely a fun deck. Nice reminiscing here. Let's see. There's this tokens deck. There's four colors. But really what this deck was all about was uh, you're just playing the cards that made that were just better if you had tokens. So this is what I'm talking about when I say that you could have a deck that plays every color. You really need a game plan of some kind. Honestly, I would say this deck was okay. It definitely had some consistency issues sometimes, so I tried to make it as consistent as possible. But uh, cards like Savage Uprising, they ignore your token, stealing and damage each one cost champion. Feeding Frenzy, your token hits something, and now you can Feeding Frenzy it. You just have cards that use tokens that take a lot of that do a lot of advantage, like Wolf Spite, Hunting Pack. Honestly, these Mighty Blows could probably, this one Mighty Blow could probably go out for a Even a smash and burn kind of does the same thing. So it draws you two cards. Great tokens, great tokens. Hunting pack makes three tokens. Really, this card's fantastic, but it doesn't you can't just shove it in any deck. You really want to take advantage of the fact that you're getting three wolves out of it. So this card's great when you can do that. And this deck also has wolf spite in it, so sometimes you'll just have a end wave transformation. Sometimes you'll just have other wolves out, and you'll get to deal more than six damage with them. And we play Ancient Champ because we need the card draw and wave transformation because our champions will sometimes get upgraded or it'll be neutral for them. But the opponent's champions all get downgraded to wolves. We have Raxa here. Raxa is great because it's just so much on the board for your goals. You get uh, three six sixes, right? And if you have loyalty, you can take out all of your opponent's random jump blockers. Uh, Rift Summoner is nice because we can break. We don't need to break the demon we make. We gain loyalty to it to make a demon, and then we can break anything. We can break a zombie, we can break a wolf. Uh, we have Plentiful Dead here. Like I said, we're just churning out the tokens. Churning out the tokens. Parents the Meek avoids our tokens. Justice prevails. All of our tokens get plus three offense, plus three defense, and righteous until I'm churned. So we're just we're just running four color tokens, basically. Great. Uh, also a good deck. This is kind of like I'm expecting. Where did I put that? I don't know. Oh, there it is. Uh, I'm expecting this deck, this type of deck, to go to be uh, underrepresented. Token decks tend to be kind of these stealth decks that people don't play that out that much, but sometimes they pop up and uh, if they meta isn't prepared for them, they just sweep the field. But, you know, people can play Flash Fires, they can run Withers, they can play basically any board wipe, really. Uh, sets to tends to set tokens back a lot because the, to the board wipes can't, you don't really get anything. Like, at least when your champions are board wiped, if they're broken, they go to your discard pile. If uh, they're returned to your hand, then you get to replay them later. But if they're just tokens, you know, that Zombie Apocalypse is going to be pretty good against you. I'm not even sure this deck should have Zombie Apocalypse. Probably shouldn't. Not even sure why it's in here. But again, I haven't played this deck in a while, so. I think this Zombie Apocalypse should probably just be something else. I need Plague. Or, uh, get the draw to of some kind, like, Gudgeon or Sweet Cinder. Not that many on turn plays, I think, so I probably would just swap this out for Gudgeon. Again, it gives us this card advantage and it can block things, and uh, it's an on turn play that you want to make usually. 
Like if you have nothing in play, or if there is stuff in play, Gudgeon will usually be reasonable as long as you're not max hand size. It's never gonna be it's never gonna be like, wow, that Gudgeon I just played. That 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 won the game on its own. More it's more of a small incremental advantage type of card. Just not finding anyone. Well maybe I'll just play. Like one of these decks. I'll try the soldier one out. I kind of wanted to. I kind of wanted to tweak this a little bit. I just played against that burn. I was talking about. You can always play against burn. In my opinion, this is just a good way to get a. It's a good rule of thumb for your deck. If you if you play against burn a lot of times and it doesn't do very well, then you probably need to make some tweaks. Kona is going first here, so our hand's actually looking pretty reasonable altogether. We have so much card draw that I can keep this soul. We're gonna take two here, and then another two, and that attacks. Smash and burn and con. What I can do is just probably just crystal golem block it and draw two. Like I'm probably gonna end up withering anyway, but you know what we'll do? We'll wither and then just play the crystal golem. And we can attack with it. Ouch. It's fine. It's the end of the world. Just don't get to draw too off of it, which is sad. It's gone. Just gonna get rid of that. That's fine. I don't want to play the surprise attack yet because I'd like to use it to, uh... Take the Kong out, potentially. That was probably a mistake. Let's just draw two now. I'm gonna go ahead and just get this out of my hand. Surprise attack. Do you want to live forever? For this angel of death here. If one's called still up, so we're just gonna start our turn. Death is close. Oh. We have eight cards in hand, so we'll just discard a soul hunter. Pretty easy. That's what this deck's all about. Yeah, I'll start my turn. Don't mind if I do. Alright. Let's go ahead and do the Soul Hunter first, actually. In the uh, Angel of Death. Because it has Airborne. So if they had like a Helion on our turn, they couldn't take the Soul Hunter and block the Airborne with it, but they could take the Airborne and block the Soul Hunter with it. Mm, they just keep passing. If keep can just discard things, that's fine. win if we just start our turn. Kill both of these. Opposing. I'm trying to figure out if it's possible for me to kill my own stuff <laughs> really efficiently. Just do this. So if I flash fire, flash fire, unquenchable thirst, that means the opponent takes nine. And then I can play this to kill off the other one. Alright. I'm trying to kill my opponent without getting fired. Fun, really. Soul Hunter is just a very fun card to play, really. Um, yeah. I don't know if I really found anything. Hey, it's 
Crystal Golems were so good in this deck. Like, Flash Fire could probably be changed. I'm not sure what you'd play instead. Maybe Force Jolt. This is very similar. You just can't draw two with it anymore. Which is not too minor, but it is significant. have wither i wonder wonder if yeah you just cut the zombie apocalypse you play one plague instead cut the flash fires just run wolf's bite instead play keep the zombie apocalypse As a one of, it's fine. Nice to have the one of answer. Well, probably just gonna call the stream then. Um, but hopefully, you got to see the new UI and you can play around with it. Basically, I'm thinking that uh, this will make things much easier, and there's gonna be some more new stuff like this coming. We've gotten a lot of feedback and uh, we've been trying to make things as easy as possible for people, new players and veterans alike. So uh, yeah, I hope you have some epic games and I'll see you next time.